Hi everyone, this is Tony Lyons. Uh, I made a tool called Directional Blur and I'm going to introduce it. So I didn't really like how Nuke's native blur was working, native directional blur. Uh, you kind of have to set it to linear and uh, it sort of goes in one direction and is not like a centered blur. And uh, honestly, it's a little bit heavy. Um, if you try to do it on a full image, for example, it takes a really long time. Uh, and I never really knew why, so I decided to make my own directional blur, which is a very simple version. Uh, so you have your size here and your rotation angle. And what it's doing on the inside is actually pretty simple. It is uh, rotating the image by the amount that you've chosen, and then it's blurring it and just rotating it back. So it's just putting it back to the original rotation, and it's... Uh, going to blur along that axis. So uh, it's really quick and I have a setting here for uh, a blur type or you can choose defocus and defocus will help better with an image that you want to have like streaking highlights. So you can also plug in a, a mask so this is kind of a way that you could uh, perhaps I don't know paint some motion blur if you need to go fix some Kronos artifacting or something like that. I've exposed the filter knob on the transformations um, if you crank up the gamma and game. Because the blur breaks the concatenation of the transforms, you might get some uh, artifacting, but they're not too noticeable. And uh, if you put it on uh, notch, it gets a bit smoother. Um, and if you change it to any of the middle ones, like Riffman, for example, um, you can actually, uh, it, it is sharper, like it looks sharper if you go back to the normal image, which is nice but uh, you might get some artifacting and some negative pixels because of the filter. So I just have this uh, clamp negatives uh, checkbox so then it won't be negative. There's another slider called uh, perpendicular blur and you can consider this that uh, if the blur is along an x-axis, this is just uh, a blurring along the y-axis, so the perpendicular angle to whatever angle you've chosen on the rotation. Uh, so for example, uh, if I start increasing this you'll see it just uh, rotates it to the exact opposite angle. This can also help with the um, filtering if you just kind of put this to uh, one or two pixels that'll smooth out any um, strange artifacting that you might get from uh, these filters. Lastly I want to go over some options you have to prevent your bounding box from getting too big. Uh, say if you're if you're directional blurring towards the edge of screen by a lot. Um, so by default, it's set to union, which is going to be just a direct result of whatever the directional blur is doing, so as big as it needs to get. Second, I have this setting called Mask Intersect, which uh, if you plug in a mask, it will grow according to just what whatever the result is inside of the mask, uh, and also keeping the uh, original image, of course. Uh, so if you only need you know half of the bounding box, then it will grow accordingly. The third option is set the B-Box to B. Uh, this could come in handy if you, say for example, have uh, a 20% overscan on your CG or your background and uh, you know you don't want anything to go beyond that because that's your canvas. And so when you blur the image, if you have it set to B, it'll just blur within that input bounding box. And lastly, I have uh, set to input format, which is just going to set to the input format of whatever you have plugged in and of course there is an adjust bounding box so you can adjust it afterwards so you could say set it to the input format plus 50 pixels for example and that will limit your blur to the inside of that bounding box. We also have a mask option as you saw and a mix option. So that's the directional blur it's uh, pretty easy and quick and uh, pretty handy when you need it so yeah enjoy.